Imagine this. You travel one meter in the forward direction and then half meter in the opposite direction followed by one third in the forward direction and so on, creating a sort of oscillating motion. You might observe the total displacement from the original position converges to some finite value, hovering around 0.7. The series you see is called the alternating harmonic series. And mathematicians have figured out that the series converges to some perfect value, natural log of 2. But how do they come up with this relation? Let's find out the answer in this video. Fast forward to 17th and 18th centuries when calculus was making waves, mathematicians started delving deeper into functions and their behaviors. They found that the behavior of natural log of x mimicked with this specific polynomial within some range. We will later explore the proof, but first, let's look at this graphical visualization. If I keep adding the terms, the polynomial perfectly aligns with natural log function. But you might notice that if I go beyond 2, the alignment breaks. No matter how many terms I add, the graph is going to flip up and down. And because we cannot put negative and zero values inside log, we cannot go below zero as well. Therefore, the expansion is valid only for x between zero and two. If you plug in x equals two, we get an alternating harmonic series. You can see the series getting closer and closer to natural log of two as you keep adding the terms. Let's now explore how mathematicians came up with this expansion. We start with the geometric series. This series goes to infinity and converges only when the values of x is between negative 1 and 1. This is because as you keep adding more terms, the bigger power of x gets so small that we can ignore them. And our series will settle down to a specific value, no matter how many terms we add. There is a mathematical way to write it as modulus of x less than 1. Now, if we closely look at our series, we notice something interesting. We can take minus x common and rewrite it as inside the bracket we have our series again. You might say that the last term is missing, but since our series goes on forever, we can ignore that missing term because it will become zero eventually. So we end up with sum equals to one minus x times sum. Solving for the sum we find one over one plus x. I know this algebra might seem complicated, but don't worry, I will show you a visual way to understand this. Imagine graphing the function f of x equals 1 over 1 plus x. Let's plot our series represented by g of x on the same graph. You will notice they almost overlap, but only between minus 1 and 1. If you go beyond minus 1 or 1, the approximation fails. If both graphs are identical between minus 1 and 1, the area under the curve on any interval inside the range also should be the same, right? Let's integrate both functions to get their areas. The integral of 1 over 1 plus x is natural log of 1 plus x. To find the integral of the series, we can take integrals of individual terms. And here you have it, the series for natural log of 1 plus x. In this expression, we can simply put x equals to 1 to get the alternating harmonic series. What happens if I replace x with x minus 1? We get the expansion for natural log of x. Well, we could have found the relation using the Taylor series, centered at 1, right? But I wanted to show you a different and intuitive way to come up with this. Don't forget to try this with the Taylor series and match your expectations. 